So, what are we doing now? So, we're going to charge. Since we're on a road trip, um, we're stopping at one of those, uh, one of the commercially available DC fast chargers to top up the vehicle. So, um, the process is pretty easy. I just have my credit card in my hand. Up to this point, you're probably thinking to yourself, this is one of those seamless and flawless charging videos that I have seen previously on social media, on YouTube, that were being promoted by many of the EV enthusiasts and EV dealerships. Now, the truth is, in many of the northern latitude locations, such as Alberta and many other parts of Canada, there are a few inconveniences um, and delays caused by the frigid cold temperature when it comes to EV fast charging. The gentleman that you see here in the yellow vest is actually a um, DC fast charger technician employed by Petro Canada. And he's here in a 2019 or 2020 um, model year Kona EV that he has for work. And based on his license plates and based on what he has told me, he came all the way from California, uh, United States. Now, a big difference in the Kona electric vehicles that were meant for the US market versus for those meant for the Canadian market is that battery heaters didn't come as a standard feature for those US bound vehicles. And of course, in um, a state such as California, it is not such a big deal. However, as this gentleman had demonstrated in his trip to Canada, he had hit a bit of a problem. Now, he was actually at this location trying to fix the chargers at this location. And the reason for that is because he was faced with a strange problem. His car could theoretically charge at a speed of up to 74 kilowatts. However, he was not getting that speed. Instead, he was getting somewhere around 16 to 17 kilowatts. Um, and that was unacceptable to him. So he just stood there wondering what could have gone wrong. Is this a, is this a problem with the station? Well, in the end, um, after our discussion, he realized that this was actually a problem with a battery chemistry. During that day, the temperature, the ambient temperature, had reached negative 10 degrees. And at that temperature, if the car had been idling, um, sitting out in the ambient temperature for an extended period of time, the battery becomes um, so cold that you cannot take in the maximum rate of charge. And as a result, road trips, extended road trips, become an inconvenience due to the time that you have to wait um, at each station. Now, this isn't just a problem encountered by the Kona. It is a problem that plagues all electric vehicles. Now, different EV manufacturers try to solve this problem through different methods. A manufacturer such as Tesla um, actually allows um, their users to heat up the battery as well as the electric motors on routes to a supercharger. Now, there are a few limitations with this approach. One of them being that being a, close, a relatively closed ecosystem, Tesla, um, as of right now, only lets users preheat um, those crucial uh, drivetrain components on routes to a Tesla supercharger, not any other commercially available DC fast charger like the one I'm at right now. The other limitation to that is um, the excessive um, the excessive amount of uh, electricity that is being used to heat up the battery and the drivetrain in this process. Now, in order to remain as efficient as possible, you would want to um, reduce any type of parasitic energy loss while you're driving. But Tesla had chosen to use um, ad additional energy from their battery pack to supplement battery heating. Now that is on top of the heat pump that Tesla has recently implemented in their newer Model 3 and Model Y vehicles. Now many other EV manufacturers such as Kona, such as BMW or GM, also uses this approach of battery heater, uh, which are typically resistive heaters um, in combination with heat pumps. However, the difference between those manufacturers and Tesla is that not many of those manufacturers lets their users manually turn on um, those battery heating and um, motor heating capabilities. Instead, the car relies on uh, its own logic, its own 
uh, computational logic to turn on those heaters, uh, either during driving or during a charging session. And those types of logic are not uh, publicly available as part of the user manual. So the owners do not know at what specific temperature, what, which specific conditions have to be met before those heaters turn on. So we would like to see future EV manufacturers um, provide those features and capabilities to their end users, as well as making um, the turning on of battery heating a more uh, intelligent um, method, as opposed to the existing logic um, that they have right now. Now, there is another approach to heating up the battery. Now, my vehicle, the BMW i3 with a range extender, can also heat up its battery through a system of coolants and heat exchangers um, in combination with the range extending generator. Now, as you can see in one of the technical manuals of the BMW i3 with range extender, um, the excessive heat that is generated by the generator during its operation is actually exchanged with the main coolant of the uh, high voltage battery. And also um, in conjunction to that, the um, heating uh, coolant or the heating loop of the passenger compartment's um, air conditioning system. So that is a very intelligent way of scavenging heat. However, not every single upcoming EVs will have a feature such as a range extending generator. Another possible solution to this could be a system of interconnected heat exchangers combined with um, computational elements such as CPUs and GPUs in the vehicle. Now, as many of you know already, uh, modern vehicles coming from Tesla or the likes of Neo um, already has already have very high powered um, computational elements built into the vehicles themselves. And currently, the purpose for those computational elements are meant for machine learning, uh, deep learning, and autonomous driving. Now, the power requirements and the power and, and the necessary um, heat dissipation capacity of these elements are currently around 500 watts, split between the CPU and the GPUs. Now, it is not a far stretch that in the near future, we can have CPUs and GPUs in a electric vehicle that would range in the 1000 watts and above category. Now, when we have such high powered uh, computational elements in a smart vehicle, it is also not hard to imagine a system where it would be able to um, locally mine cryptocurrency, for example, or with the help of 5G, um, low latency networks, be able to um, engage in a cloud computing activities for the general public. And when the car can engage in these activities, it is also generating passive income for the end user. And the access amounts of heat that is generated by those computational elements can then be routed through a heat exchanger in exchange with um, the battery, the main traction battery coolant loop. When we have a system like that, the car can act as a, each car can act as a productivity hub for the wider society. So we think that is a good way of moving forward when it comes to EV. All right, all the tangents aside, let's see what actually happened on the day of my charging. So what just happened there? So we've just um, used our credit cards to authorize the station to start charging our vehicle. And as you can see, it has already been authorized. And now we'll see just how fast the Audi e-tron Sportback is able to charge at a 350 kilowatt station. So this one should take uh, oh, yeah. pretty close to 150, but I'm not at a very high state of charge. Oh, sorry, I'm not at a very low state of charge. And also the battery pack's probably also a little bit cold. Uh, so we might not get to the full speed.
So John, how long are we charging for? So we're only going to be charging here for no more than 10 minutes. Um, right now, because of the winter temperature, and because the battery is at a pretty high state of charge, we're not able to receive 150 kilowatt of power as this car is um, manufactured to do. However, as you can see here, we're still charging at a relatively high speed of charge at 72 kilowatts.